Hi, I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and welcome to another Rapid Algorithm Review. Today we're going to review stroke, and there is nothing more time sensitive than medical care during a stroke. Now, just like other algorithms, it all starts with the patient presentation. And when assessing for stroke, a great pre-hospital or even hospital assessment is the Cincinnati Stroke Scale. And there's three components, made up of facial droop, arm drift, and slurred speech. So facial droop, ask the patient to smile. And we're looking for asymmetry in the face. Is the face drooping? If it is on one side, well, it's facial droop. Next is arm drift. Have the patient extend their arms, palm up, close their eyes. We're gonna watch them for 10 seconds and we're looking to see if one of those arms starts to drift away. Be positive for arm drift. Next, slurred speech. Ask the patient to repeat a sentence like, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Are they able to say that without slurring their speech? Now, if they present with any one of these deficits, chances of having a stroke are 72%. If they present with all three of these deficits, about 87%. It's fast, it's reliable, it can be done in about 60 seconds. So first, get your assessment done. Second, support your ABCs. Provide oxygen if they're hypoxic. Check a blood glucose. Alert the hospital that you're going to that you have a possible stroke coming in so they can prepare to receive this patient. Other critical factors, assess their last known normal. When was the last time anybody saw this patient without neural deficits? They were acting normally, everything was fine. When was the last time that they were presenting normal? We need that time. Now sometimes you don't need the assessment. The patient presents as if they're having a stroke. I was teaching at the hospital yesterday and I bopped upstairs to the ER because a former student of mine had brought a patient in. I wanted to go say hi. Um, and I'm talking to him and he had brought in a stroke patient and he was telling me what happened at the scene. He showed up and he saw the patient. He could see the facial droop. He could see that she was paralyzed on one side. She had slurred speech, skipped the exam. He knows what's going on. His scene time was minutes. And in EMS, it's really important to know what we can do. It's more important to know what we can't do, and we can't fix this. Definitive care for this patient is in the hospital. His scene time was minutes, load her up, let's get going. And then he did all the supportive care on the way. Got the blood sugar, got the IV, notified the hospital, did everything he was supposed to do, but he did it on the way to the hospital. And reduced that time to get that CT so we could treat this patient. Now, if you're in the ER and you're preparing to receive a patient, the suggested timeline, if you look at the algorithm, is about 10 minutes. Now, when the patient hits the door, in that 10 minutes, we want to reassess the patient, make sure they're oxygenated, review their history, order a CAT scan immediately, get that cooking, uh, obtain vascular access, and all this should be done within the first 10 minutes. And activate the stroke team if you have a stroke team in your hospital. Get them coming, get the experts moving on this. When your patient comes to the ER, we need to do a more detailed neuro exam, uh, maybe an NIH scale, which was developed by the National Institute for Neurologic Disorders and Stroke, or the Canadian Stroke Scale. And this is more detailed, so we can see if there's subtle differences in this patient's neural status as they progress through their care at the hospital. Now, looking at strokes, we can break them into two categories, ischemic and hemorrhagic. And in an ischemic stroke, a clot has formed. And just like in a heart attack, a vessel in the brain has developed some plaque, the plaque ruptured, formed a clot, and occluded blood flow and oxygenation to that part of the brain. Or a clot formed somewhere downstream, floated to the brain, got wedged in a vessel, occluded blood flow, and that caused a stroke. So those are ischemic strokes, and they account for about 87% of all strokes. And we could treat them with fibrolytic therapy and bust up that clot and restore blood flow to the brain. Now the other category is hemorrhagic stroke. And in this case, a blood vessel has ruptured in the brain. It's bleeding. That's why it's so important to get that CAT scan as quickly as we can to rule out a hemorrhagic event. If we administer fibrolytic therapy in a hemorrhagic event, that would be fatal to the patient. Now, if we're going to administer fibrolytic therapy in an ischemic stroke, we need to try to do this within three hours of the patient's last known normal. And that's why it's so important to get that information in the field and relay it to the people in the hospital. We'd like to give that medication within three hours. Some patients, we can extend it out, and you see it getting longer all the time, four or four and a half hours. Uh, but it's from the time of their last known normal.
Now, if the patient meets the criteria to receive fibrolytic therapy, we want to administer that as quickly as we can. Review the concerns, the risks, uh, the possible hazards with the patient. And then it's suggested the patient shouldn't receive any anticoagulant therapy for 24 hours after we've administered the fibrolytic therapy. If the patient is having an ischemic event, uh, but does not meet the criteria to receive fibrolytic therapy, the algorithm suggests we can still administer aspirin and admit them to the proper unit for evaluation by a neuro team. Now, if your CAT scan reveals a hemorrhagic event, uh, obviously they're not going to get fibrolytic therapy. We need to get neurology involved with this patient very quickly. We may be transporting them, driving them, or flying them to a facility that can manage this hemorrhagic event. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute. Thank you for watching this rapid algorithm review. Remember to like us on Facebook and please become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next algorithm.